Hello, dear friends. You are watching another episode of Power of Law, and our today's guest is the administrative legal deputy rector of Yerevan State Linguistic University, Efter Bruso, a candidate for bar, uh, Mr. Gabriel Balayan. Hello, Mr. Balayan. We're happy to see you here. Hello, Mr. Atomian. Thank you for invitation. I suggest we talk a little about our educational system today. Moreover, that we are in a reform process, passing from one educational system to another in frames of the Bologna process. And it is very important that foundation be laid properly. I may be wrong, but our educational system now looks like a business project where many students and their parents want to get a diploma without putting much effort in it. And some universities care about the number of students, which is the security for their operations and future sustainability. What do you think? Do you agree to this opinion? Uh, Mr. Artovmian, uh, first, unfortunately, the issue you raised does exist in Armenia. It came from this uh, society, from the Soviet times. But I must say that my observation, at least in our university, shows that the tendency is towards improvement. And if the World Bank, in its report in early 2000s, said that the percentage of the diploma-craving people was great, Today we see the problem has changed and the threshold for admission to university has been lowered. So more applicants can become students. We are now approaching the sample of a number of um, European universities where graduation becomes difficult. That was, that's what happened in Europe and USA, USA where they admit 200 students but only 20 graduate, the best ones, with pre-agreed job agreements already. We are approaching that with small steps. We really lowered the admission threshold indeed because sometimes students are not prepared on the exam day, but then they realize the importance of education as they proceed with their education. Also, state approach and education legislation pay, play their role in improving this. Also, some people say there is little demand for higher education. People don't need it. But I would say on the contrary. If there wasn't high demand for education, people wouldn't go for it so much. Of course, it can't guarantee that all graduates and scientists are good quality, but as long it's, as it is demanded, people will go for it. Also, there seem to be more supply in some professions than demand. On the other hand, some employers can find well-qualified staff. Mr. Atovman, you probably mean pedagogic professions. Indeed, there are a few universities producing thousands of teachers each year in a few professions. However, today we have a shortage of teachers in rural areas and actually lack of qualified teachers even in Yerevan. The tendency today in Europe and USA is that universities decide on policies and recommend them to the government. We haven't reached that level of legal understanding, the same Bologna process where Armenia joined in 2005. As you know, in 2004, the Barcelona Convention on Postgraduate Education was adopted, in frames of which five universities were involved in the process in 2005, including our university, which we continued to successfully implement. But back then, the rectors would get together in Bologna as delegates from the governments to decide on how to go ahead and uh, governments would accept their proposals, because universities are regarded by them as government partners. We also have an issue uh, of separation between science and education, as in, in the universities of advanced democracies, where we also aspire to get. Uh, you know, I think the people uh, who got education in Soviet time believed that the education system was better then, and the better specialists were prepared then, rather than the credit system that we have today. Uh, thank you for the question, Mr. Atovmian. I don't want to undermine the Soviet education system, but let's admit that it was a closed system. The Soviet specialists, with minor exceptions, worked only in USSR. After USSR collapsed, these specialists remained unemployed because their job market no longer existed, so people started working at other places which showed the bankruptcy of Soviet education. My dissertation is dedicated to, to constitutional right of education and everything related to that. I made an interesting observation there, that USSR was in a contest with USA, and if USA produced 15,000 engineers, USSR would produce 30,000 engineers. 
That's why Soviet engineers sometimes had to fix up boxes in a hardware store, as there was no employment um, demand for them, although there was no unemployment officially. It was an ideological thing. Yes, the engineers were hammering nails in boxes. This was the Soviet situation. In some cases, of course, the Soviet scientists were ahead by decades. But let's also admit that we also received a negative legacy. And the credit system was a must for our universities in order to integrate with Europe. Sometimes students would show their diplomas in Europe and they would say, OK, fine, you have a diploma, but how many hours or credits do you have? Credit is not just a number, but also the letter frame which shows how students got his mark. The credit can be received by good and bad students, but the credit quality is shown through the new system. There is much talk recently about corruption in universities. What do you think needs to be done to eradicate that vicious phenomenon? Uh, you know, corruption can have different manifestations. If uh, anyone tells me today there is no corruption at major Western universities, I will not believe it. Corruption is not just about bribe and money. Sometimes you get a call to admit someone as well. And this happens abroad just as well. It's all about the size, really. Last year, OSC ordered a poll, a survey, and we also assisted the organization who was implementing it. The poll placed Bruce of our university at the end of the corrupt universities list. Another question was about three most corrupt universities, and in total result, we were the last but one there. I don't know the methodology of the survey, but I can say that no university is completely corruption-free. It comes from salaries, from social issues, uh, also from supply. So if there is supply for corruption, there will always be demand. For example, now are elections, and all parties are saying uh, they offer you bribes, they take it from you, from your children and parents. And that's where the bribes come from. Same is here. If we have equal, uh, quality education, we have a quality society. I personally teach now constitutional rights and civil society. That program is dedicated to human rights, and even EU now believes that you need to start teaching children, not even from school, but from preschool. If we educate human rights to preschool and our kids become citizens from early age, then we may eventually shape a developed society. That's why I think it's important to teach children their rights. In our university, for example, there is lack of appeal of grades, of some administrative decisions, etc. Also, perhaps internal transparency of universities. Last year, uh, I spent two months in New York State University studying their financial system. And I was astounded at their regulated system. Everything, Mr. Atovman, literally everything was regulated. It seemed too unrealistic for us. But then, as we started a few projects here, we realized it is possible with some goodwill and, of course, some legal amendments. Could you, you, you repeat your question? In terms of transparency. Yeah, transparency. Okay, transparency. For that matter, we need a university council. Uh, in our university, I can say we have installed Albert system of document circulation. All our budget details, implementation, circulation and rector decisions are all put on the website and everyone including the students and you can open the website and see how the money is spent. We also put online the audit uh, survey uh, audit of the university. So we are trying to do all that maximum clearly. Hope it will become a tradition all over the country. It depends on the will of the administration. The law does not force us to put it online. It is what we want. Same implementation papers we put online for seven years now. It's about clarity and simplicity. All decisions of rector, of council, of university uh, are necessary put online within 48 hours. What do you think are the main obstacles for better development of our educational system? Legal issues or other? If I say low financing, it will mean nothing. My analysis has shown that in developed countries, expenditures uh, are like this. 40% for salaries and the rest for development of the university. For different uh, study tours, organization of conferences, scientific seminars, etc. Here in Armenia, we have 70% for salaries and 30% or sometimes 25% for the development of university, which is not enough. I was recently at a conference in Romania where they said that the state only financed them by 70% and it wasn't enough for them, while we are financed by state by 10%.
Perhaps the last question, what's the role of students in establishment of a rule of law state? Very critical, since students will not always be students, they will have offices in the future in business and in public institutions, etc. So their future is directly related to Armenia's becoming a rule of law state. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Balayan. Dear friends, this was uh, Deputy Rector of Administrative and Logistic Issues and Affairs of Yerevan State Linguistic University after Brusov, talking about educational system and reforms. Follow our future programs. Thank you very much. How has the Bologna system influenced the quality of education system? I don't complain, it's normal. It's made things simpler for students. There are many loopholes, I don't think we have fully switched to Bologna system yet. It has improved attendance of students to the university. We are generally pleased with the system. The problem is that Bologna system is not fully introduced in our universities. For example, Bologna system envisages that we select professors or have a change to transfer to other universities, but we doubt we can change um, from third year to another foreign university. It has positive sides, of course, and since we want integration, then why not get into Bologna system? If we look at the primary and intermediate education links, we see some inefficiencies there before the university level. It's good in the sense that students can't skip classes all the year and then just show up and get their exam. But the bad thing is they pay too much attention to attendance. It's not fully implemented in ways like students electing professors or curriculum, which doesn't work here. So it's a diverged system which needs to be improved in the future. Generally, I am happy since corruption then decreases. Do you think our university education is competitive? I don't think so. I don't think we've reached a level that we can compete with other countries. Compared to Azerbaijan and other neighboring countries, Armenia is in quite a good position. Our professional education is not very competitive abroad, if I look at my case. It's not just me, but many people think our education is not competitive. Being familiar with many European educational systems, I think our system is very good. I don't know what Armenia diploma can give a person, but it's, um, it's necessary. Competition is necessary and everyone should try to get better uh, than others. I don't think so. I think former system was better than now in terms of getting grades or writing diploma papers. Have you ever been asked for or given a bribe for a grade? Never. It has never happened at our faculty. Never have I met anything like that. Corruption or something. Not me, no, no. No, I studied at conservatory and university in different areas and never met it. No, neither met nor was asked for. I get it normally. I've studied for four years and I graduate this year. It never happened to me. Never happened at our university as far as I've seen or heard. No, never asked for a bribe or anything. I haven't given or asked for a bribe. Never need needed. How would you assess the rallies around the Yerevan State Linguistic Universities after Brusov? Frankly, I haven't heard much, so I don't know. But it's a good thing they aren't passive. I think they are doing the right thing to protest. I think it's a welcome step and in any case it's good when students mobilize and stage actions in any case. I think they are right. If their rector means a lot to them, they need to mobilize and demand him back. I think it's very good that students wake up from civil society and realize their civic position and voice it. I believe it's very important.